Now, the other point you mentioned is signing those requests. So let's have a look at the update authentication service. It's the same thing, basically. Oh, they share the same interface. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because of the request. Yeah. Why do they share the same interface? Why do we use, uh, what is the use case for this service? Updating what specifically? Uh, the passport or the email address for the user. Okay. So maybe you have an update service interface with that specific interface with what can change, right? So here, what can change is update or update. Um, what, what, what can you change? The email? Yes, email and or the passport. So every service needs its own protocol. It needs its own protocol, but they should have its own defined statically exactly what they can do, right? Because right now, since if you accept a URL request, not stop me from passing to the authenticate service, to the update service, a URL request for logging in. And that makes no sense at all because the response you will get back will not be able to be mapped into the response you want, right? Yes, that is so. Correct. So they are not actually, they don't have the same interface, right? They, the operations you can perform in one implementation and the other are different, but that doesn't mean you need different protocols. You would add a protocol if you want to hide a client from the concrete implementation. So where are you in the iOS Lead Essentials program? Which module? I just finished main module, I believe. Okay. Okay. Yes. So in the live lectures, after the main module, we'll show you exactly how to do exactly the same, like this level of abstraction without protocols. So protocols is a fine solution. You can use a protocol. There's nothing wrong with that. But there are also other solutions that you will learn as you progress there. Protocol is a nice solution to decouple the client from the concrete implementations. So you need to define here aesthetic, aesthetically like a request, passing exactly the data that the service can operate in. If you can only change the email or password, it should define exactly that in the interface. Does it prevent clients from passing any, any request there, right? Because the service cannot handle any request. It can only handle requests for updating email or password. Yes. So you need to define that specifically, what the service can handle. And if you want to separate your clients with protocols, then each service should have its own protocol. One protocol for updating, one protocol for logging in, another protocol for whatever, whatever other service needs. Now, a lot of people don't like that because, oh, now we have a lot of protocols. But the thing is, you can have a lot of protocols to define exactly the interface your clients needs without leaking any implementation details. But it doesn't mean you need to have three implementations. You can have one implementation that implements all the three protocols, if that makes sense. OK. So we can have one protocol, one, for example, we can have one class that implements three protocols. Oh, OK. We can have three protocols here, like the Login, the sign up, and what is the other one? Update. Yeah. You have only one implementation, but that's an implementation detail. The clients don't need to know. And why would you separate into three protocols and not one protocol with three methods? You can also have one protocol with all the three methods in there, right? Yes. Because usually the client that it wants to log in is not the same client that needs to update. There will be another screen, it will be another component that will update. And another component will log in, another another screen, another component will sign up. Now to separating these two into these three operations in three protocols allows you to have different screens that only depend on a specific functionality that they need. The interface segregation principle in action.
So you can test these in isolation only with the sign up operation. You can test the login screen in isolation with only with the login operation and the update as well. You can keep all the three operations in one single protocol. If it makes sense, if the same client needs all the three methods, then you define an interface for the client with the three methods. But if they are in separate components, they need each operation, then you separate into three protocols. That's the interface aggregation principle. This is the clients should not depend on methods or properties or any kind of details they don't use. So if this client don't use login, it should not have access to login function. If this client doesn't want to sign up or update, it should not have access to the sign up and update because it makes your components easier to test. For example, if you're using a spy implementing the login and you're testing the login screen, you don't need to also implement the sign up method because what would your spy do in there? Like crash, right? Yeah, or what exactly. should it do? So then you define one interface for each client. Now, you can also have three implementations here, one for each, or you can have only one implementation. If it makes sense to share the some internal state here between these three operations, you can have one class actually implementing three protocols, or you can have three classes. OK. You know, also put them, these three things in separate module. You can put these three components in a separate module, these three components in another separate module. It really depends on the needs of the project, but those are all valid options. So my mistake was I thought I can use the same interface for different operations, actually. Yes. Yes. You, you try to share one interface, yeah. Exactly. It, it seems like more generic, so less code, but that's not the case, especially with interfaces, you know? So you need to be specific there. And you get more compile time safeties as well because you know exactly you can only pass for example here now you can only call this method if you're passing the email and password but beforehand you could pass any request you could you could literally send a request pass a request like this url request url uh, google.com which is definitely wrong right for that use case so with compile time safety is now of forcing your clients to provide an email and a password for the update request. You avoid any, you make your APIs easier to use because you cannot use it wrong. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So that's another thing you can do here. One protocol for each service, but you can have a single implementation, it makes sense. So you don't end up with duplication. Yeah, but especially in the beginning, it feels counterintuitive, right? So don't worry about that, <laughs> you know, because you end up with more components, you know, more protocols, but that's not the case in terms of, you know, like the the correctness of your design. So oh, okay. you're going to save code in the future. <laughs> yeah, you see this all in the program as well. You will see that, for example, the, the interface we use for loading the images from the server is different than the interface we use for loading the feed. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. If we try to have a single interface, then we make it harder to use because now the clients need to know how to create that URL in the correct form with the right URL, with the right details. Yeah, and they also like, so if the client also implements a protocol that has more methods than it needs, then the client is lying right because you're going to end up either having like a an empty implementation or like having fatal error or something that doesn't make sense and you just have it because of the conformance to the protocol yeah. another solution would be to have an authentication service protocol that has all the operations here like login uh sign up and update uh, user Right, so you, you can have that, like, and then you, you force implementations to actually implement all of them. So you can only have one implementation that does everything. When we separate in three protocols, you can either have one implementation that does everything, or you can have one implementation for each, or you can have one implementation that does sign up 
and sign up and log in, and another one that just does update. You, you have much more flexibility by separating the protocols.